Hey geeks, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about benchmarking problems for multi-objective optimization. So if you want to build your own optimization and want to see how good or bad it performs compared to others, this video is for you. Don't forget to subscribe to always stay up to date and enjoy the video. So why we do benchmarking? Well, the reason why we do it is quite simple. Normally we have a black box problem that we want to solve when we implement an optimization and you have several inputs and you have one or more outputs. Today's topic is going to be about benchmarking for multi-objective optimization. That's why I have two targets here. What we normally know or don't know about the black box problem is a lot. That's why it's called a black box. So there's a lot of confusion what is actually inside or what is happening inside. And that's why we have a lot of uncertainty within the question, how does our best solution look like? And this is the main reason why we use benchmark problems where we really know the best possible solutions to see how good optimizers that we implement are. How can such a black box problem look like? I have one very simple example here from you. Um, it's one of the most common ones called Schaeffer one function. Um, it actually takes one input and gives back two outputs like F1, which is just a squared one and F2, which is uh, the input value minus two and then squared. And the beauty about this function is, and that's also like the, the base I want to teach you today about uh, benchmark problems is that we know the real Pareto front here. So if we take now a look here at the Pareto front, you can see, obviously there are only partial points here, um, depending if we have continuous or discrete input variables, it can be only points or in the end it will be a line. But you see, we know exactly these are the best solutions resulting out of our black box problem because we know the black box problem. And what we can do now is we take our optimizer, we don't let him know how the function works in this case, but we just say, please find the best solutions. So find the Pareto front. And perhaps when then our custom optimizer runs, the Pareto front that he gives us in the end um, are perhaps five points and they are situated or located like you see them here. And I think you get the message out of this one picture already is that you can directly see in which areas is my optimizer good, in which area is it bad perhaps. So how good are the points distributed over the Pareto front here? You see for F1 he get the extreme points, for F2 he doesn't at this moment. Um, and you can clearly see how good they are distributed. Like, does he find only points in a special area or not? And you can use such functions to iteratively improve your optimizations. Now I want to present you my favorite functions. Yeah. Um, why are they my favorite functions? I start with number one here on the left side from Zitzler Depp Thiele um, is because these functions can be scaled up within their input dimensions. So you can say, I have one input dimension, I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on until 30 and the Pareto front remains the same. So you can perfectly test your algorithm, how good it scales when you go up in dimensions, for example. Um, on the left side now here, you see the first function, which I really like, it's called Zitzlab, the Deptila number one, which has a um, convex shape. Like this continuous. Um, I won't go into detail now how it uh, works and how you can calculate it. You find the link in the description below. Um, then the second function is also scalable, but it looks quite different. And I think this is the main point that I got here is I need functions. Like if I know more or less how my black box problem behaves, I can better know which optimizer to take because some optimizers are better for convex Others are better for concave shapes. Some are good for both. But if you look at the third function now, it looks totally different. The, the frontier is not continuous anymore. It's like discrete somehow. And uh, therefore, probably also here, different optimizations will perform differently. And these three functions are mainly the ones that I use first, seeing if new optimization approaches could be valuable or not. But Obviously, there are much more, so I just want to share some with uh, some with you now, um, and 
Yeah, I'm glad if you have other functions that you enjoy that uh, you use for benchmarking that you share them in the comments. Um, you find all of these linked as well in the comments uh, or in the video description. And what you see here is like on top these, the ones I showed you already, but especially interesting are the ones uh, in the middle called DTLZ. Uh, so from the same guys, just different um, different order of the of the numbers from Zitzner that Thiele. But you can see that you can scale up the target dimensions here as well. So you can have, have up to 10 target dimensions, which is super interesting because it gets much more complicated to go up in target dimensions. And uh, the last three ones, actually, I just started to use them. I found them in a paper some weeks ago. I'm super curious about them. You see that with the last one, uh, we can go even five dimensions more than with Zitzler Deptile. Um, but in the end of the day, um, I cannot tell you a lot about them so far because I'm just going to test them, but I just want to share it with you. You now have a solid base to build your own multi-objective optimization algorithms and benchmark them against others to see what you are doing well and in which points you really need to improve. I'm looking forward to it and I'm really curious about what you do. So if you have an implementation that you want to share, drop it in the comments below or contact us. And never forget, keep optimizing.